Hey guys, this is Landon with the Command Valley, bringing you another Commander Deck Tech. Thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring our channel. If you want to check out their new and improved store and support the channel while doing it, check out the link in the description below. We have a copy and pasteable deck list in the description that you can paste right into their deck builder and buy your singles there. If you want to support the channel directly, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. Well, Commander Legends spoilers are finally upon us, and this is like an early Christmas for us here at the Command Valley. We love brewing up decks based around the new legendary creatures that are coming out. It's really fun to kind of play into that hype, and today's episode is on one of those commanders that has been spoiled, and it is on Nimrus Una's Trickster. She is a legendary creature fairy knight that costs three, a blue and a black. She has flash and flying, and whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, look at the top two cards of your library, and you get to put one of those cards into your hand and the other into your graveyard. And she is a 1-6, which is actually a fairly good body. Now, personally, I've been waiting a long time for a flash matters commander. I think that flash is a really cool mechanic, and there are a lot of really cool cards in blue and black that have flash. That I feel like we're just waiting for a home, and I really feel like Nimrus is a good fit for them. Fairy Tribal was also another thing that I considered but there are already a lot of really powerful fairy tribal commanders and I don't feel like Nimrus really brings anything else to the table that those don't so I kind of settled on control. So one of the hard parts about playing control in a multiplayer format like commander is every time you go to counter an opponent's spell or remove a piece from their board you also have two other players at the table that have not lost a card by you removing an opponent's piece. So basically what that means is you are technically down on card advantage and Nimrus kind of mitigates against that because whenever you cast an interactive spell during an opponent's turn you know removing a piece or countering a spell, she puts a card from your library into your hand and one into your graveyard. So that kind of makes control, I feel like, a little bit more viable. So the strategy of this deck is going to be ramping our commander out as soon as possible. We want to get her down on turn three to four, you know, turn two if we get a soul ring, but that's, you know, the dreamland. But then once we get her out, we want to start kind of controlling the board. We want to start countering really big spells that are going to end the game, stop our opponents from comboing off, pick off creatures that are going to do a ton of damage to us. We're basically in it for the long run. We're trying to get to the end of the game, and hopefully the engine that Nimrus provides is enough to give us more card advantage than our opponents. If you're unfamiliar with how control decks play is you're not trying to counter every single spell your opponents play. Number one, we don't have the card advantage for that. And number two, it's really not that fun to play against or play that type of deck. We're really only trying to stop big threats and we're only wanting to take out things that are really going to be a threat to us. So let's go over the ramp that we have, the ways that we have of making sure we can consistently get our commander down on turn three to four. So with the mana rocks, we've got Arcane Signet, Charcoal Diamond, Demir Signet, Felwar Stone, Sky Diamond, Soul Ring, Talisman of Dominance, and Wayfarer's Bauble. So all of these artifacts besides Soul Ring and Wayfarer's Bauble cost two mana and they give us a mana. So that's really what we're looking for. If we can drop one of those on turn two or turn three, we can get Nimrus out on turn four or turn three, depending on which turn we get those out on. We've also got two rituals with Dark Ritual and Cabal Ritual. Um, they each add three to our mana pool, except for Cabal Ritual can add five to our mana pool if we have seven cards in our graveyard, which shouldn't be hard to do with our commander. And the Naiad of Hidden Coves makes all of our spells that we cast during our opponent's turn cost one less so that has some really good synergy with the deck we're wanting to play a lot on our opponent's turn so that's going to save us a lot of mana throughout the game so now that we've ramped our commander out and she's sitting on the table this is where we pivot into a type of draw go type of deck you know draw a card for turn and we're just most likely going to pass because we're waiting to see what our opponents do so let's go over the instant spells in the deck starting with the ones that draw us cards so we've got Blue Sun Zenith and Pull From Tomorrow. Each at instant speed, we draw X cards. Pull From Tomorrow makes us discard a card, but for one less mana than Blue Sun Zenith, totally worth it. These can help us draw a lot of cards and make sure we have enough answers in our hand. Brainstorm lets us draw three cards and put two back on top of our library. Impulse, we get to look at the top four cards of our library, put one into our hand and the rest on the bottom. Frantic Search lets us draw two cards, we discard two cards, and then we get to untap three lands, which is super useful. We can draw cards, hopefully draw an answer if that's what we need, and then we get to untap our lands to cast that answer. Dig through time, instant speed, delve. We can get rid of the useless cards in our graveyard and we get to look at the top seven cards of our library and put two into our hand. And then factor fiction, we reveal the top five cards of our library and opponent separates them into two piles and then we get to pick one and the others go into our graveyard. So those are super useful for making sure that our hand stays full. Factor fiction has the added benefit of we can give it to an opponent and maybe influence their decision to help us keep answers to maybe a problem or a big threat at the table. I've been talking a lot about our counter spells and our interactive spells. 
So let's go over those next. We've got Delay, which can counter any spell, but we exile it with four time counters, and in four turns, that spell can be cast. We've got Counter Spell, which good classic counters anything. Negate, which can hit any non-creature spell. Arcane Denial, which can hit any spell, and the person that we counter gets to draw two cards at the beginning of the next upkeep, and then we get to draw a card as well. We then have Unwind, which can counter any non-creature spell, and then we untap three lands. We then have Rewind, which is kind of similar, except for it can counter any spell, and we get to untap four lands. And then we have Drown in the Lock, which is a super flexible spell. I've put it in the counter slot, but it can also be a kill spell, depending on what our opponents have in their graveyard. We then have Mystic Confluence, which again can kind of do it all, but it's really in here as a counter spell. So we get to choose three, and we can choose the same mode more than once. Our options are countering a spell unless its controller pays three, returning target creature to its owner's hand, and drawing a card. And then we have Muddle the Mixture, which can counter any instant or sorcery spell, but then it has a really powerful ability called Transmute. For So for one, a blue and a blue, we can discard it from our hand to search our library for any card that costs two mana and put it into our hand. And there's a really important spell in our deck that costs two mana, we'll get into that a little bit later. So now let's go over the Spot Removal. So these are ways we have of picking off creatures right on the spot. So we've got Pongify and Rapid Hybridization, both instant speed, both one mana, basically blue's version of Swords of the Plowshares or Path to Exile. We basically replace a really powerful creature with a 3-3 Frog Lizard, which is super useful. We then have Reality Shift, Go for the Throat, Hero's Downfall, and Curtain's Call. Reality Shift can exile any creature, which is super useful against graveyard strategies. Go for the Throat can just hit any non-artifact creature. Hero's Downfall can hit any creature, and Curtain's Call costs a lot less mana if we have all four of our opponents, and we can hit two creatures with it. We're then playing Snap, which is a super useful spell. We can bounce any creature back to its owner's hand, and then we get to untap two lands. All right, for instant speed board sweepers, we have Aetherize, which returns all attacking creatures to their owner's hand. We then have Evacuation, which is an instant speed bounce all creatures back to their owner's hand. And then Force of Despair, which I've been waiting a long time to find a good deck for that, and I feel like this one's pretty good. If it's not our turn, we can exile a black card from our hand rather than pay the spell's mana cost, and we destroy all creatures that entered the battlefield this turn. And I really feel like three mana to hard cast this really is super worth it, and even if we only hit our opponent's commander or maybe one or two creatures with this, I definitely think it's worth the cost. All right, the next uh, group of instants I've kind of called Tricky Tricks. They didn't really fit into the other categories, but I felt like they're really cool interactive spells. So first up, we have Reigns of Power, which lets us untap all creatures we control and all creatures target opponent controls. You and that opponent each gain control of all creatures the other controls until end of turn, and those creatures gain haste until the end of turn. So since we are primarily a control deck and aren't going to be very frequently adding creatures to our board state, we can basically gain control of an opponent's board state basically for free, and maybe even take them out with their own board. We then have Narset's Reversal, which lets us copy any instant or sorcery, and then we return that spell to its owner's hand, and we get to choose new targets for the copy. So this is a super flexible, useful spell, has a lot of different uses. Maybe we want to, you know, cast somebody else's Cultivate or whatever it is that they're trying to do. We then have Memory Plunder, which lets us cast target instant or sorcery card from an opponent's graveyard without paying its mana cost. Again, kind of like Narset's Reversal, it really can do whatever based off of what our opponents are doing. And if there are board wipes in an opponent's graveyard, it'd be super cool to pull a board wipe out at instant speed. There's just kind of a lot that spells like this can do, and it just kind of depends on the situation, but I think these spells are super fun. And then finally, we have Misdirection, which works as a functional free counter spell, but also has some other utility. So we can exile a blue card from our hand rather than pay its mana cost, and we change the target of target spell with a single target. So if we're having some of a counter war with an opponent, you know, we play a counter, they play a counter, vice versa, we can use Misdirection to misdirect their counter spell to misdirection. So our counter spell resolves. We can also use this, you know, if somebody tries to remove Nimrus from the battlefield, we can misdirect their kill spell to maybe one of their creatures to somebody else's creatures it just has a lot of utility depending on the scenario that's it for this instance but we are playing some sorceries to kind of cover some of the blind spots in the deck and one of these sorceries is super powerful so we've got deadly tempest which can dis which destroys all creatures on the battlefield and each player loses life equal to the number of creatures they control that died this way so if our opponents are really overcommitted to their board, they've just created a massive army of tokens, or they just have a lot of creatures, they are really going to get punished for having that when we cast Deadly Tempest. We then have Nightmare Unmaking to, to kind of increase how many board wipes you're playing. Um, I think that this is a super underrated card. It has two different modes. The first one is exile each creature with power greater than the number of cards in our hand, or exile each creature with power less than the number of cards in our hand. So depending on the board state and what's in our hand, we can really do a lot of damage to the board. And I think that it being able to exile creatures is not trivial that is super important there are a lot of graveyard decks running around so this is a really good catch for those 
We're then playing Feed the Swarm, which I really wish that this was an instant, but I can't really complain because it is enchantment removal in black. So we can destroy target creature or enchantment and opponent controls, and then we lose life equal to that permanent's converted mana cost. The life loss is very worth it. Like I said, this is one of the only ways in Demir that we can really interact with enchantments at all, so I feel like it deserves a slot in the deck. And then we have Spell Twine, which is one of my pet cards. I, I love this spell. It's always a blast to cast. It really makes for some wacky turns. So you exile target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard and an instant or sorcery card from an opponent's graveyard. You copy those spells and cast the copies, if able, without paying their mana cost, and you exile Spell Twine. So with our commander, we are putting cards into our graveyard. So it's highly likely that we have some really good targets in our graveyard, along with all of the other instants and sorceries that we might have played throughout the game. So Spell Twine, I feel like, is almost always, always get six mana worth of value out of it. We then have Windfall, which each player discards their hand, then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. This has some amazing synergy with another creature in our deck that I will get into once I go over the creatures, but this spell, super good. And then we have the card I was referring to earlier that we can tutor up with Muddle the Mixture, and that is Tor of Hailfire. This is one of the big finishers in our deck. Games that we get this card into our hand are probably games that we are going to win, and X black black, we repeat the following process X times. Each opponent loses three life unless that player sacrifices a non non permanent or discards a card. So ideally with this deck, what we're trying to do is pick off our opponent's creatures, keep their boards clean, uh, prevent them from drawing a bunch of cards so we can make it to the late game when they don't have very many resources left. Maybe their board isn't super developed. And when we cast this spell with X equal to 10 or 15, this is going to do a lot of damage and probably even close the game out. So this card is super important. Because I was trying to stick to somewhat of a budget with this deck, um, this is one of the more expensive cards in the deck, but if you are looking to upgrade this deck, there are so many routes to do it, but I would definitely put in more ways of being able to find Torment of Hellfire. All right, with all of the non-creature spells out of the way, let's get into the creatures that we're playing in the deck. But I'm going to start off with the only two creatures in the deck that do not have flash. So the first one is Wave Break Hippocamp, which is another one of those cards that I've been waiting for a long time to find a home, and I it's perfect for this deck. So whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, you get to draw a card. So this works really well in tandem with our commander. Essentially, it is a second copy of our commander. So us being able to replace two cards every time we spend one card is amazing. And then Drownew Lich Lord. It is a legendary creature zombie lord. And if it would be dealt damage, we sacrifice that many permanents instead. But the relevant part is we can tap it to give target instant or sorcery card in our graveyard flashback until the end of turn. And its flashback cost is equal to the mana cost. So this is a really powerful effect. The mana is a little bit steep, but I think that it's worth it to be able to get double use out of our instants and sorceries and be able to kind of take our opponents by surprise. And it does have extra synergy with our commander. So if we have this out and we are, you know, casting spells during our opponent's turn, that does open up some more lines of play because we look at the two cards given to us by our commander and we have to choose one to put into the graveyard, but maybe we kind of need both. Drown New lets us get use out of both of those spells, even though one is in our graveyard. So I think it's definitely worth the include here. Okay, let's get into the flashy spells. So I'm gonna start off with Dirge Bat, super cool card that came out in Ikoria. It has a mutate of four black black and it is a flashy flying bat. When it mutates, we get to destroy target creature or planeswalker and opponent control. So it is kind of expensive, but I do like the instant speed, be able to come out of nowhere and kill something. And we do have one other mutate card in the deck, so maybe it's possible that we could double mutate, but I just kind of think it's a cool card. We then have Dream Eater, which when it enters a battlefield, we get to surveil four. So that means we get to look at the top four cards of our library and we can choose to put any number of them into our graveyard and the rest go on top of our library. And we get to return target non-land permanent in opponent controls to its owner's hand. It has a nice body, it's flying, very useful card. We then have Illusory Ambusher, which when it is dealt damage, we get to draw that many cards. So ideally what we would want to do with this is flash it in as a blocker against an opponent's really powerful creature. You know, maybe, maybe they've got like an 8-8 or a 9-9. We flash this in, this thing's going to take 9-10 damage, or we're going to draw a ton of cards. And hopefully we can use those cards to maybe deal with the 9-9 or, you know, deal with some other threats on the table. It's just a super useful card. We, next up we have Notion Thief, which is the creature I was referring to earlier that interacts super, super well with windfall maybe even a little bit oppressive if an opponent would draw a card except the first one they draw in each of their draw steps instead that player skips that draw and you draw a card so let's say we 
cast Windfall, and then we hold priority and flash in a Notion Thief. What's going to happen is our opponents are going to discard their hands, and the cards that they would have drawn, we get to draw. So let's say the greatest number of cards discarded this way is six. We are going to be drawing 24 cards, and our opponents will be left empty-handed. That is essentially going to be game over. I, it's kind of hard to you know to imagine a scenario where our opponents can come back from that, but you know maybe. We then have C Dasher Octopus, which is our only other mutate spell. And whenever this creature deals damage to a player, we get to draw a card. So this is pretty nice utility. Being able to draw an extra card every turn is is pretty nice to have. Can help keep our hand nice and full. We then have Slither Wisp, which. I, this is one of the cards I was referring to, and I really wanted to build a flash deck because I think just the art on this card, the idea of this card, I think it's super cool, so I'm super happy to include it here. Whenever you cast another spell that has flash, we get to draw a card and each opponent loses a life. So with all of almost all of our creatures having flash, this is basically like a, a Beast Whisperer or a Great Hinged type of card that you know lets us refill our hands every time we cast a creature, so super useful. Next up we have Merfolk Trickster, which when it enters the battlefield, we get to tap target creature and opponent controls, and it loses all abilities until end of turn. This is super, super nice to keep us alive, maybe keep an opponent from comboing off with a powerful creature that has really powerful abilities, just all around useful card. We then have Portal Mage, which when we flash it in during the declare attacker step, we can reselect which player or planeswalker target attacking creature is attacking. So this can really change a lot of the math on combat and really come out of nowhere and really swing things in our favor. If an opponent is swinging something big at us, we can send it somewhere else, or you know, maybe swinging at one opponent, but we kind of need another opponent to take the hit. We can do that too. It's just a super useful spell. We then have Stunt Double, which can enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. We then have Torrential Gear Hulk, which when it enters the battlefield, we can cast target instant or sorcery card from our graveyard without paying its mana cost. So this can really come out of nowhere, take our opponents by surprise, really give us a lot of value. And being a 5-6 is not trivial. That can add up a lot of damage over time. Super good card in the deck. We then have Nimble Obstructionist, which has cycling for two and a blue. So we discard it and we draw a card. And when we cycle it, we can counter target activated or triggered ability that we don't control. So that has a lot of utility. Not a whole lot of effects interact like this that lists counter and activated or triggered ability so i thought that was pretty fitting in the deck okay and now for the card that i'm probably most excited about in the deck that is coming out in commander legends it is opposition agent and it reads you control your opponents while they're searching their libraries and while an opponent is searching their library they exile each card they find you may play those cards for as long as they remain exiled and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast them so this is like an avon mind sensor on steroids basically with this out our opponents cannot tutor their libraries or we are going to get so much value off of them and honestly this card i just i love this card so much i am so excited for that gotcha moment <laughs> man i just i want that to happen at some point in time all right next up we have quickling which is a super peculiar card and i i had to like sit and look at this card and i i decided that it was worth playing in the deck so when it enters the battlefield we have to sacrifice it unless we return another creature we control to its owner's hand and i decided on this card because a lot of our flash creatures have really good enter the battlefield abilities so being able to reset that i feel like is pretty useful and then we have Lockmere Serpent, which is a beast of a card. It is a 7-7, seven, seven, and we can pay a blue and sacrifice an island to make unblockable. We can pay a black and sacrifice it to gain a life and draw a card. Or we can pay a blue and a black and exile five cards from an opponent's graveyard to return this from the graveyard to our hand. So this thing seriously is bonkers. Having card draw, evasion, and a way to recur it all staple onto one card. This card I, I view as one of the finishers in the deck. If we can get this out, it's going to stick around for a long time in our hand or on the table. It's just a huge threat. And that is all the creatures that we're playing in the deck. We are at a low 17, but with how much card advantage we have and answers that we have to almost everything, I feel like we're in pretty good shape right there. All right, let's go over the mana base. So we're playing 15 islands, 14 swamps, a choked estuary, a command tower, a demir aqueduct, a demir guildgate, an exotic orchard, a sunken hollow, and an underground river. And like all of my deck techs, there are tons of ways to upgrade this deck. I tried to keep it on a budget, not including any cards over $10, but when it comes to control, there are some very, very, very expensive cards that you could get. All of these really expensive counter spells definitely have a place in this deck. I know that not everybody has access to them, but if you have those cards, definitely put them in. Maybe take out some of the weaker counter spells that I have in here. Um, cards like Necropotence that can keep your hand full all the time, or cards like Phyrexian Arena. These are cards that definitely have a home in this deck, but I was trying to keep it fairly budget. So I hope you guys enjoyed this deck. Really appreciate you guys watching this. 
Really appreciate all of our subscribers and all of our Patreons. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet and you enjoy our content and want to see more, definitely hit that subscribe button. With Commander Legends spoiler season going on right now, we're going to be posting a lot of videos because there is a lot of commanders coming out and we want to bring as much content to you guys as possible because we really enjoy doing this. And if you want to support us directly by becoming a patron, you can head on over to patreon.com slash command valley. You will get access to exclusive content, discord, merch, and lots of other perks. And another quick reminder that going through the game grid link in the description below will help out the channel and you can pre-order a lot of the commander legends singles or commander legends products i know a lot of us here at the command valley have already got our boxes on pre-order even before we saw the spoilers and i'm very happy that i did after seeing some of the nuts cards in this set also game grid ships nationwide now so you can get your cards no matter where you're living in the country and then we live stream every tuesday at 7 p.m so you can join us for brawl and arena and then our social media handles are command valley p1 and you can like us on facebook and all of the links for that are in the description below Again, a super huge thank you to you guys. I hope you guys are enjoying Commander Legends spoiler season as much as we are. And we are super excited to build these decks and play them in Duel of the Peaks and just have a great time with these cards. And with that, I hope you guys have an amazing weekend.